everyone, Teddy Baldessar here in La Lox, Switzerland at Tissot's headquarters. As you suggested to come here, I am here after our last discussion. Sylvain Dalla joins me here. Nice Hello, to see you Teddy. again. Nice to see you again. I'm really happy to welcome you in Le Loc, in the heart and uh, yeah, where everything started. Actually, this room where mm -hmm. we sit now is the original uh, factory, the original atelier, which are more than uh, 160 years old. So I heard 1907. I heard 1907. Exactly. So this is yeah, a piece of history. So could you tell people that have not been here before we jump into some new pieces, which we're going to look at, so stay tuned. What is this uh, headquarters all about? Uh, can you talk about the space more? Can you talk about what happens here just so people yes, that so are here, watching? Yes, so here uh, we don't have the assembly line, but we have the headquarters. So we have the central services, we have the marketing, we have the sales, product development. We have 7,000 museum pieces uh, that are staying here. We have about 320 people that work on this site. And then the other side is too far away to take you there today, is where we assemble the watch, which is in the Medindrizio, Ticino, where we have about 200 people assembling uh, our beautiful Tissot watches. So here you are really at the place where we define the strategy uh, for all different departments, logistic, finance, customer service, customer care, um, product development, etc. Et so how many total people work out of this facility? Free, in this building, we have 320 people okay. in this free building. Okay. But you are really at where the story started for, for Tissot uh, back in 1853. Beautiful. And you can see the actual structure in here. See. This is it? Yes, this, this is, is the original one. So we are talking about new as well as old today. And by new, we have some new pieces in front of us that I would like to walk through. So earlier this year, we did see what you had for the first half of the year and the new Chrono, the new 35s. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, the it new looks beautiful. yeah, it looks beautiful. But we actually have more in store for this year, and I wanted to unveil that for uh, our viewers. So do you mind us walking us through uh, some of these new pieces? The thing that's catching my eye first is something that's, of course, talking about your history, pulling from the past, this new heritage chronograph that you unveiled. Yes. Can you tell us about this? I love this watch, and actually I love it because once I was <laughs> with Lori from the product department in uh, the places where we have stored all the beautiful uh, historical pieces, where, as I said, 7,000 pieces mm -hmm. in, these, uh, in, in our drawers, classified one by one. And I felt in love with this 1938 chronograph that we had, which was called the telemeter, mm -hmm. because it integrates a telemeter in the, yes. in the dial. And uh, we pulled it out, and the product team has reworked it, keeping all the key design elements of these 1938 inspired watches. So the dome sapphire crystal, mm -hmm. the telemeter and the tachymeter uh, integrated into the dial, the beautiful contrast between this intense black dial and the, the different information you have uh, on the like dial. It's like gilt markers, it's beautiful. Yes. Also, the, if you look at the case, we have integrated uh, the new Nivacron Valjoux movement, mm -hmm. so a magnetic uh, uh, spiral and the, the, the famous Valjoux 7753 mm -hmm. with a beautiful rotor, decorated movement. So, also the case, I really like the, the shape of the case because as you know, the Valjoux is a quite of a strong movement, mm -hmm. but here uh, we managed to keep it uh, looking quite uh, slim. Thickness. Yeah, the thickness the is thickness not bad at all. Is, is really uh, easy to wear despite the fact that inside you integrate a beautiful Valjoux movement. So yes, it's a watch that uh, I love, uh, uh, inspired from our rich history, and we bring it back to life uh, few years later because, as I said, the origin of this telemeter Tissot watch is 1938. So you're going through the archive, you stumbled yes, on this. Well, not only, but every year we, we have a love story with one or two models mm -hmm. and we rework it. But of course, we don't only inspire ourselves from the past, we have also to look forward. But it's true when, that when you have such a rich history with beautiful design, it's very difficult for us not to let our uh, uh, passion for our historical pieces being uh, reinterpreted. So we have two dials here. We have the white dial mm -hmm. with the red uh, indexes and we have uh, the black dial with uh, the PVD uh, bold color. And 42 millimeter case. 42 millimeter. And yes. Belgium movement on the inside, 62 yes. hour power reserve. And then price for this one is... So here we will be at about in US dollar. We're going to fix the price soon, but it will be at around uh, 2000 mm -hmm. uh, US dollar. Beautiful. Beautiful. Another chrono. Another chrono. This we one has a more of a driving and automotive undertone. So very different compared yes. to the telemetry we just saw. But want to tell us about this one. Very different, but um, uh, also this one has a touch of uh, inspiration from the past because uh, back in the 60s, actually in 65, we launched the PR uh, family. Uh, particularly robust, particularly robust. And mm -hmm. that's why it's called PR Sport for the S or PRS 516. Mm -hmm. 
And actually, um, as you know, we have been involved in the motorsport for decades and decades and decades. And back in the 60s, we were uh, already present in rallies and uh, motorsport, cars, motorsport. And uh, this watch has a lot of uh, the reinterpretation from, from the original uh, PR family, which was, uh, for example, integrating uh, the straps with holes. Uh, even the bracelet, the metal bracelet, I show it to you later on, mm -hmm. has this hole. And I think it was one of the first time in the whole uh, watch industry. And uh, this was re uh, inspired from uh, the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. If you look at the beautiful pushers also, they are inspired from pistons. So they are pistons the car, like yeah, yeah. from the car. Uh, this red line also uh, um, emphasizes the sport aspect. Mm -hmm. And inside we have also the beautiful Valjoux with a skeletonized rotor. So Beautiful. that's the new PRS 516. So much more modern interpretation, yes. but also true to the rich history uh, that we had in motorsport that we continue with all our partnerships, uh, such as MotoGP, which mm -hmm. were the official timekeeper. And this is available in a variety of colors or just sold the sole color? There will be uh, two, uh, two different references of mm -hmm. dial, and there will be also a bracelet or leather, this leather treated with the little holes. And similar pricing to the telemeter as well for this one? A little bit under. A little bit under? Beautiful. Yeah. In 45 millimeter case? 45 millimeter, okay. correct. So a little bit larger on that side, but have to uh, accommodate all this out there. Yeah. And speaking of that, we have a 35 millimeter in front yes. of Yes, you remember? When, yes. Yes. When we're we met me? in Cleveland. You, yes. In off, you asked me, when do you, will you launch a 35 millimeter mechanical PRX? Yes. And I had a little smile because in fact, we were already <laughs> working on it. And uh, it's a beautiful uh, uh, watch that we have done here. So the PR, PRX original side that you will see also in our museum collection was 35 millimeter. So it takes the 35 millimeter, but we integrated the Powermatic 80 hour inside. And here we have a solid gold bezel and mm -hmm. um, we also integrated in the index in the indexes uh, diamonds mm -hmm. so uh, this watch would be particularly sophi sophisticated have a look at it yeah, it's beautiful and uh, it's the first mechanical prx 35 mm that we will launch i know you can't tell me but i'm just going to take this as there's more to come for the 35 millimeter i know you can't say anything you, but that's you will, that's just what i'm going to you, say you, so you know you, will have you guys to, can decide as well i don't know you will have to come back in uh, <laughs> 2023 or how we'll have to go back to cleveland or or somewhere else maybe we'll US. meet in between we'll figure out where that's at somewhere yes. in the middle of the atlantic ocean yes. we'll do what we have to do but this is uh no this is very beautiful and uh, similar price to that of the 40 millimeter, because you did, of course, have this uh, 18 karat gold bezel that was yes. here, but this is slightly more affordable than that one. Is that right? Well, for uh, a watch that uh, integrate a gold solid bezel, mm -hmm. it's very reasonable. But here we will be at about, I guess, in US dollar, we are going to fix the price also soon in the range of uh, 1,800 uh, US dollar, 44 diamonds. 44 yeah. diamonds. And all real diamonds, diamonds, of course, too. Real diamonds. We right. only use Top Wessel Stone VVS diamonds. And then for the release on these, these are going to be available uh, for, for all these models uh, later this year? Yes, later this year, starting the summer, we will have uh, um, the telemeter mm -hmm. and the PR516 uh, mm -hmm. is uh, also ready now. So PR, PRS516 coming out now, then will come the telemeter, then will come before Christmas as a perfect gift for your beloved, the uh, PRX with the solid gold 35 millimeter with diamonds. My fiance is probably watching and is already lusting after this one so i might have uh might have something to pay for later this year but uh <laughs> anyway beautiful watches thank you so much for also allowing me to come into your space and uh, travel all the way to switzerland you live in or this is a beautiful country this is a beautiful space and excited for a full day ahead of uh, looking through your archives and uh, just getting lost thank in you. some of your uh, history you're gonna see the behind the scenes so you will be able to share with uh, all your followers the behind the scene of, of Tissot and it, it's just a part of it we will need three days of your time next time we organize a trip in, in Ticino you will see you will love it because I know you like red wine it's <laughs> probably the best <laughs> don't I, out me out here one right. of the best <laughs> places in Europe to get good red wine is okay. Ticino we will take you to our uh, factory there uh, next time I don't need any more excuses to come back but <laughs> Sylvan always a pleasure thank you Teddy thank you so much thank you bye everybody bye Hi, everyone I'm here in Tissot's headquarters I'm here with Max now, Max is a watchmaker here at Tissot for 15 years. He's also brave enough, although not being able to speak English that well, he wanted to get on camera and still kind of walk us through uh, being a watchmaker here uh, at the company. So what we have in front of us is the movement inside the new PRX Chrono, a value-based movement. 
And we're going to go through from uh, the, the actual beginning and then moving forward to actually having it fully cased up. So Max, thank you so much. And uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing this process here. So now we're starting off and we have this, the base of the movement where we have it in the stand for us to then start doing some of the assembly. So can you talk us through that first step of assembling this watch? Where do we begin? Okay, to start, I put the dial on the movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and after I close the keys. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, donc je fais le reset de mon chrono. Okay, so I you reset, reset the chrono. Yes. What, what's the reason for that? Why do you why do you make sure it's reset? Yes. You don't want the mechanism going, of course. Um, for uh, indexation, mm -hmm. uh, the counter, so counter indexation. Sure. Okay. Start, stop, and reset. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I go take jump the the date. Okay, I prepare my counter hands, and now I'm ready for put the hands, the counter hands. Hmm. Now you do the center hands. So now you're and double checking whether the hands are activated within the movement and with the crown operation, they're responding correctly. Exactly. Okay. So once you assemble all the hands, or you put all the hands and stack them together at the center of the dial, yes. you then ensure that none of them are touching, so there's no friction happening, so they can freely tell time. Exactly. Mm. Perfect. Right at 12. Take it off the, the crown mm -hmm. on my movement. So you need to take off the crown for it to slide into the case, and then you'll then put that back after it's in position within the case. Exactly. Okay. You have a gasket ring there. Yes, there's a gasket. Mm -hmm. And now I can pull my crown yes. in my movement. The next step, I'm fixing the movement on the case. For security, I take off the, the mass. Oscillating weight, the, uh, the, the, the rotor. Weight, weight, yeah. rotor. So you secure the movement into the case with a yes. clamp and a screw, exactly. so it'll stay in position. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, now my movement is fixing on the case. So the movement is fixated within the case, yes. it's now stable, Yes. And it's locked into place. Um, now, I can uh, reflex in my hurtle. Perfect. Locked into place and reacting how we want it. Next step, I'm fixing my bezel on my case. Mm -hmm. Okay? And first, Place in the gasket. Yes. So before he locks into place the, <coughs> the crystal, he's getting all the dust off the dial, ensuring that that gasket yes. will lock into place, and it creates a nice seal. No dust, perfect. Mm -hmm. Just for a plate support, okay. Mm -hmm. now, I'm now you're locking the bezel into the case. Okay. Creating a tight seal. Double check everything is in alignment. And for finish, the keys back. And the same process for the case back. Exactly. Okay. Fully casing up the Valju 7753 within the TSO PRX chronograph. Okay, so we're here in TSO's Heritage Department and Archive. So they have over 8,000 vintage watches from their archive. We're gonna go get some exclusive behind the scenes looks of uh, what is behind uh, these doors. So let's go check it out. So everything is here. It's in a chronicle order. Most of them it's written uh, Tissot and Son on the dial because that's for this market. Uh, Tissot won a lot of prizes for these watches. This one that I will show you was made for the Swiss president of the time, mm -hmm. Yuma Dro. It's N, you can see, N, D. Mm -hmm. And now we show you the, our first wristwatches. So you can see some of special with flexible, you can see. Mm -hmm. Ingenious it was. Now I will show you a Tissot speciality with a chronograph. Yes. 
uh, an entire section of the catalog was devoted to this kind of wristwatch. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was really an um, uh, instrument for professionals. These are all from the 1930s. Yeah. It's also the year of the first timekeeping for Tissot okay. ski competition. Oh, there it is. So this yeah. is the original yes. PRX. It's a Sea Star reference from 1978. Same 35 millimeter case as the one that was just recently reissued. All right, so I'm here with Chloe, and she's nice enough to walk us through some of the facility here. Chloe, thank you for this. Thank I have you for a being here. giant room in front of me. Can you tell us what this is? Because this yes. looks very intimidating and very complex. What are we looking at here? So this is the heart of it all. This is our warehouse that was built. It's the most recent building. It was built in 2010 mm -hmm. and took less than a year to be operational and doubled our cap capacity. Yeah. We've got yeah, five impressive robots here. Look at that, they, automated. Yeah, all are automated. And they reach a speed of five meters per second. So, so yeah. So how many watches are in here? And so this is helping with fulfillment and organization of all your parts and components and watches, correct? Yes. So, so you can have, exactly. You can have up to six million watches per <laughs> year that can be stacked in there and 12,000 different components and they're all stacked in 32,000 compartments that you see there, oh those, those grey boxes. So I'll take you around, there's a big circuit, so this okay. is, goes through all the di different departments. So we can so go in see. there, we're going to go in we're here. We're going to go in there, go all see right, the there beast. we go, let's see what happens. <laughs> all right. After you. This is the warehouse. This is it. You must watch your head. So you can see all the boxes. So all of these are stacked with different components, watches, yeah, they can be components or assembled watches, depending, and, and the machine just decides where it puts it. And there's multiple alleyways. And anytime those machines it's move is them. when an order comes in. Yep. So here we go. It's already firing up. It's crazy. And how how many like square meters is like this facility, like this this space? Seven thousand five hundred cubic meters. Cubic meters. Yeah. And then this is above us. This is like a carousel that's going around and bringing the boxes in. Is that? Yep. After so, it drops it off. So it's got a conveyor belt that's 540 meters of conveyor belt. 540 meters of conveyor belt. That goes through all the different <laughs> departments, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, let's go to the different departments, but crazy. So we'll show you where that conveyor belt leads, where they get it from, where it, how it all happens. So we're in a fulfillment room, correct? Yes. And we see the conveyor belts. So what we just saw with the machine, that giant fulfillment center, it starts here, correct? It all starts here. So they receive all the merchandise and they enter them into the system. And then once they do that, they put it straight up and everything goes into the stock. <laughs> so you got that conveyor belt, 540 meters, that starts here. Wow. So okay. this is the shipping department. Okay, that's where things ship out. That's where it ships out. So just to show you a bit the the size of all the shipments. So all the orders also go through the belt that comes here and mm -hmm. this is where all the shipping is done. So after the orders, like a market places an order for, for watches, they'll receive it here. So receivables are over there. So when things are coming in, yep. then it will go on the conveyor belt into mm -hmm. that warehouse. Yep. And then when you get an order that needs to go out, comes on the conveyor belt down here to fulfillment. Yes, and I'll show uh, you where the order happens. This is where the order comes in. These are, yeah, this is where the watch stock is and okay. the orders come in from different markets. To the back there, there you can so see it. So you can see it. the other side of it, right? Yeah, Okay. you can see it working. He's gonna show us exactly how it's done. So once the order comes in, they call it, it comes automatically. He places the boxes back into the system. It goes back into the stock. And a and robot then is going to put it back. Yeah, and then I'll show you where it goes next. Okay. So they stick all the stickers on the boxes. Bonjour. And there a double check is done as well because they control, they check that the quantity is right compared For to the order. order. Yes. And then they put it back onto the conveyor belt. Okay. Another check is done there. So like three, four checks. 
Yeah, it's Before anything goes out. Yeah. For the quantities. So if you take a watch out, it won't pass. And if it does have the watch, it goes straight through, and that goes straight through to the shipping department mm -hmm. that you saw before. So. Hmm. so one fourth of all exported Swiss watches are Tissot's, and they all come through this facility. They're assembled off-site, but this is where most of the order processing is happening and their corporate offices. So what you're really seeing here is the backbone of all the markets across the globe, getting these orders processed, going out, and you're looking at millions of watches a year. So this is where they control all the quality of the watches. So new watches arrive right here? Yeah, exactly. They call the boxes here that needs to, need to be tested, mm -hmm. and they test the aesthetics, the water resistance, um, the date, the setting. So they're all take, checking a specific thing. Yeah, but they can all take over for anyone else. So I hope you enjoyed this behind the scene looks at the operation at Tissot. If you'd like us to do more of this in the future, let us know down in the comments where you'd like us to go next, and please give this video a thumbs up as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching, and see you all next time.